In 2008, bank and property prices were collapsing around the globe. The Chinese government took action swiftly with a massive stimulus package, which just didn't help stabilize and revive the Chinese economy. It became a lifeline to the world. With a country building a city the size of Chicago every year, sometimes things always don't go as planned. This is China's largest ghost city. China's most deserted ghost town, Kangbashi, Ordos. Would you ever want to live in a deserted city? We all know China is one of the fastest growing countries in the world. With new roads and world famous infrastructures rising faster than ever, China builds beautiful and diverse cities of culture. While China builds new cities, inhabiting these big cities will take much longer than expected. Hundreds of kilometers west of Beijing, in the arid deserts in Inner Mongolia, is Ordos, China. A new, infamous city was born. With generous roads and gorgeous infrastructures, this city, built from scratch, shocked the world for something they did not quite have. People. This ghost town is called Kangbashi District, infamous for its empty streets, abandoned high-rises, and deserted homes. The question is, why was Kambashi called a ghost town? Journalists flocked to Kambashi from the BBC, Al Jazeera, and highlighted the lack of people living in the city. Statements quickly spread, earning a global reputation with many names, a ghost town, dead city, a failed dystopian. This new city soon gained infamous headlines, showcased not for all the things it already had, but for what it lacked, namely citizens. From a town in Inner Mongolia where gleaming buildings built with government money stand empty. Welcome to the city of Ordos, a city of the future. But no one's moved in. The city stands empty. This is what Ordos looked like two years ago, a city of the future in the middle of nowhere. To our confusion, no one lived in Ordos. They tell us that almost every single one of these apartment units have been sold, but no one is living in any of them. The building hasn't stopped. Somehow people are convinced that if you keep building, people will come. It's a ghost city with ghost apartments. No host or hostess, just ghost owners. So the incentives in the system are to, to build. And if that's the easiest way to achieve that growth, then you build. So local officials here built. Empty homes, new and neat. Block after block. In 2009, this city was in a constant stream of criticism from international media. According to the media, Kambashi had been the recipient of a Chinese financial crisis. The international media sensationalized about Kambashi and commented municipal debt, oversupply, or bankrupt developers to attract readers. Many media outlets have declined to return to the area or offer a follow-up update. And that is what we're about to do now. Savvy reporters from the Times Magazine and Al Jazeera did not ask municipal governments before making any of these statements. In fact, what was glossed in these reports is only the surface of Kambashi's progress. The city's construction only began a mere six years before. That is not enough time to finish a new city and have it fully populated, something Western media did not understand. In fact, this isn't one of the first time that China got the reputation of a ghost city. Pudong was one of the first ghost cities, now a prominent global financial district of Shanghai. Kangbashi is an urban district of the prefecture level city of Ordos in Inner Mongolia, China. Built on the wasteland of Inner Mongolia, was constructed to accommodate the number of investors in this booming mining town. During that time, coal and natural gas made Ordos one of the richest places in China. The Chinese government thought Kanbashi was going to be one of the fastest growing cities in China. However, in 2009, plans fell apart due to the Ordos and world financial economic crisis. And now, Ordo City, Kambashi New Area, is frequently described by the news media as a ghost city. 
This 90 square mile town was built to house a million people. The idea behind Kambashi was for it to serve as an administrative center of government offices and Ordos Municipality of the middle and upper class residents. Ordos Municipality is divided up in various districts, towns and sub-cities. The most prominent is Dongsheng and Kambashi. This modern and futuristic city is perfect. Its only flaw was its ambitious size. For the first five years, the population of Kambashi had no more than 30,000 inhabitants. The vast area was too large to fill in a short amount of time, with streets 40 meters wide and intersections half a kilometer apart, this wide gap physically separated people and destinations. However, the emptiness of Kambashi is a deception. This new Chinese city is far from dead. The original plan for Kambashi is a million people by 2023. And we all know the progress of China. In the middle of 2019, Ordos and the government of China secretly reverse the town's fortune with one amazing strategy. Ordos, with the help of the government, moved some of the city's top schools to Kambashi, which meant if the parents wanted their children to get the best education, parents had to move their children to Kambashi. Putting such top prestige schools was not originally in the strategy, but it was the right strategic move. Parents did move their children to Kambashi and the population slowly added in numbers, slowly bringing this city the life it deserved. Certain regulations had to be followed. If parents wish to send their young children to a school in a particular district, they must also own a home in the exact district. Teachers also relocated because of cheap relocation taxes, discounted homes, and tax breaks offered. Soon businesses and restaurant franchises such as McDonald's and Subway followed suit. With subsidized rent, free transportation, and low property taxes, people started flocking into Kambashi. In 2020, the population of Kambashi grew from a measly 30,000 to a whopping 200,000 people. Today, 200,000 people drive in the streets of Kambashi, thriving in its once desolate town, with cinemas, art centers, sports fields, opera houses, shopping centers, and horse racing fields. More than 2.8 million tourists visited Kambashi in 2019 alone. Awed by the elegant landscape and the cutting-edge technology, this modern district has been graded as China's first 4A-level scenic area. In 2019, about 85% of the condominiums in Kambashi had been sold and have wealthy Chinese and foreign owners. This large city has now expelled its reputation as China's ghost town. Thriving in education, business, entertainment and tourism, the place now has over 4,500 businesses operating two plants for electric car productions and 30-story tech tower. So much for calling it a ghost town now. Talk about growth. With the area's ghost town status seemingly shaken off, the local government began approving condominium construction for the first time in eight years. As many as 10 new projects are set to be green-lighted by the end of the year. However, Kambashi still faces obstacles. Their main challenge? Diversifying its economy. With Kambashi located in the middle of the desert of Inner Mongolia, the areas isolated geographically is still one to tackle. What do you think of Kambashi? Is this still a ghost town? Or is this a new peaceful city? Let us know in the comments below. If you've learned something, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to Reportify Media. Until next time.